Hello, thank you for joining us today. Entrepreneurs in Christ consists of a tribe of marketplace ministers doing business with godly values and with an emphasis on marketplace ministry. We are confident you did not stumble upon this page by chance, but we believe God divinely orchestrated this moment and you were handpicked to hear this message. We implore you to sit back and feed your spirit with the undiluted word of God, which is able to build you up as an effective kingdom entrepreneur and marketplace minister. We ask that you subscribe to this page as we release fresh content that will confirm your faith and convictions to maintain a righteous stand with God on a weekly basis. Also, please do like this video, click on the like button, share with a friend, share with a family member and leave a comment or question below where necessary. Thank you and God bless you. Your name alone be glorified in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we worship you, Lord Jesus. We exalt your holy name. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise the living Jesus. Praise the living Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is to God be the glory. Great things he has done. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let's exalt the name of the Lord. Let's give him praise. Let's give him honor over our family. Let's worship the most high God. Not of he that will it, but of God that shirts mercy. Let's open our mouth and lift the name of the Lord higher. Father, we worship you. We exalt your holy name. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, glorious God. We worship you, Lord. Thank you, mighty God. We exalt your holy name, Lord Jesus. Hallowed be thy name, the King of glory. Hallowed be thy name, El Shaddai. We worship you, Lord Jesus. Father, we worship you for a good day, O Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Hell Shaddai. We worship you, Lord Jesus. There is no like you. Our God will worship you. We lift your name higher, Lord Jesus. Thank you for the gift of life. Thank you for strength. Thank you for power. Thank you for your joy. Thank you for your peace. We exalt you, Lord Jesus. We say thank you. Glorious God, we thank you, Lord Jesus. Let's exalt him. Let's call him his name and give thanks to him. Father, we worship you, Lord Jesus. In Palaba Zinge de 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 Father, we worship you, Lord. We say thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, mighty God. We exalt your holy name. Your name alone be exalted in the mighty name of Jesus. Your name alone be glorified in the name of Jesus. We worship you, King of glory. We worship you, El Shaddai. Be exalted, Lord Jesus. Be exalted. We say thank you, Lord Jesus. We say thank you. We say thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Let's quickly open our Bible to let's quickly open our bible to today is our breakthrough prayer point let's quickly read isaiah 26 isaiah 26 verse 3 you will keep in perfect peace all who trust in you all who trust in the lord whose thoughts are fixed on him our thoughts are fixed on god we trust in him totally we will now pick a prayer point from this scripture isaiah 26 3 that we break through from anxiety we break through from fear 
anything that is not of God will break through from it in the mighty name of Jesus. Anything that is of fear over our lives, over our businesses, over our home, we break through in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's open our mouths to any spirit of anxiety, every spirit of fear. We break through in the mighty name of Jesus because our focus, our thought is on him, is on our God in the mighty name of Jesus. In and and in jesus name we pray amen in psalm 29 11 psalm 29 verse 11 the lord give his people strength the lord give his people strength the lord blesses them with peace as a child of the most high god we break through into peace of the lord once we lack peace we will find it difficult to be creative we will find it difficult to do things we break through into peace of the lord we receive peace we receive strength in the mighty name of jesus every weaknesses we cut them off ourselves right now in the mighty name of jesus let's open our mouth and pray lord jesus we receive strength because it is written in your word that you give peace you give your people strength and the lord blesses us with peace we receive your peace in the mighty name of jesus we receive your strength in the mighty name of jesus in the mighty Amen. name of jesus Christ. We receive your peace in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Over our home. We receive your peace, Lord Jesus. The Lord gives his people strength. The Lord blesses us with peace. We receive your peace in our lives, Amen. in our businesses, oh Lord. We receive your peace, Lord Amen. Jesus. Thank you. 
Thank you, Lord Jesus. Lord is your name, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Madam Adenike. Um, Shade, are you there? You can take over, please. Hello, Shade, can you hear me? Okay, I guess she had a network issue. Hello, Shade, are you with us now? Yes, I'm here. All right, you can go ahead and leave, please. Thank you. Okay, all right. Um, Let's just take a moment and just blast in tongues. Let's build our spirit up right now. Let's let's unmute and blast in tongues. <laughs> Psalm 37, 23, and 24 said, yeah. The steps of a righteous man are ordered by the Lord, and he delights in his way. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholds him with his hand. The steps of a righteous man are ordered by the Lord. So if there is noise, right. can you please mute your end? If there is noise, please. When we begin to pray, you can unmute. Thank you. Go ahead, Shady. The righteousness here is only given through Christ Jesus. So if you are on the altar, you know that through Christ Jesus, you are made righteous, which means according to God's word and his will, your steps ought to be right, um, ordered by the Lord. But if we're being completely honest, sometimes we wake up in the morning or we walk into a new season or a new place and we have no idea what to do. We are all entrepreneurs here. Sometimes we need to make big decisions and even small decisions. And some of these decisions are life changing. Honestly, every single day of our lives, what we eat, what we drink, where we go, who we talk to, who we make friends with, the church we go to, when we fellowship, all of these things. So I want to, I want you to ask yourself, if you look at your life, you were, if you were to examine your life right now and the situation that you're in, can you truly say that your steps are ordered by the Lord, that you are seeking his face, that the things that you are doing, um, um, he delights in them? If not, we need to pray. I know for sure that I'm on this table. I know that there are, more, there are decisions that I, I will make and I, I have made that are just... The, the, I didn't even seek the Lord. I just assumed. But the scripture tells us that God orders the steps of righteous people. So if you are righteous through Christ Jesus, every single thing that we do needs to be ordered by the Lord. So I want us to pray right now for God's direction in our lives. It is only by his wisdom that we are sustained. It is only by his will yeah. and his word that we're able to even advance and truly receive everything that he has for or take hold of everything take authority take dominion do all the things that we are learning on this altar every every single day of the week we meet literally like if you're in one group or the other you're meeting you're learning you're being poured into you're reading your bible yet the results are few and far between and part of it could be 
that our steps are not truly ordered, that we are not seeking his face, that we are not seeking his kingdom in all that we do. So let us take the next three minutes right now and just ask the Lord for wisdom, for, for, for empowerment, for knowledge. Let's ask the Lord that he should order our steps according to his word. Let's unmute and pray right now. delight in my way, oh God, that you delight in me, you delight in me, Father, order my steps, li karaka zonta li amasande mbrandoshka ta, zekali amasande rebosa ta, beraka ta 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 ba da ba ka ta na masu mbali ekete, zekara ba ka ta la ba sonda rande ekete, zela ba ka ta li amasonda mbrandoshka ta, zela ba ka ta li amasonda mbrandoshka ta, malika ta li ka ta, zekali amasonda mbrandoshka ta. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for direction, for wisdom, for insight. Thank you for ordering my steps. Amen. <laughs> Verse 25 of that same scripture says, I have been young and now I'm old. Yet yeah. I have never seen the righteous in the righteous forsaken. Not yeah. his descendants begging for bread. Yeah. Yeah. Begging for bread. Yeah. David was saying here he has never seen the righteous forsaken. The righteous through Christ Jesus. Those that lean on him. Those that obey him. Those that lean on him. Those that obey him. Those that are ready to do his will. The righteous. They don't beg for bread. They don't beg customers to pay them. They don't beg clients. They don't beg people on the internet for money. They do not beg. The favor of the Lord rests upon them. The wisdom of the Lord rests upon them. That is the reward of the righteous. They do not beg. They lend. They are not borrowers. They give to people. Their descendants are blessed. This is the word of the Lord. I don't know in what area of life you may still be begging. Instead of taking hold, instead of obtaining, there's a difference between taking something and begging for it. By God's mercy, so much is made available. Yet, from time to time, we beg. We have to beg. When our Heavenly Father sits on the highest throne, and we are His children, He calls us His own, the apple of His eye. How can we be begging? How can kings be begging? Yet, this is the reality for a lot of us. We are still begging. 
begging for money, begging for this or that. And I'm not talking anyone down. Trust me. I am not even sitting on any pedestal here when I say this, that this was a reality for me up until mm. much recently. And I said, no, I realized, I learned, I, I listened to what people that have, opt- that are not begging, what lenders are telling me. And they're saying, no, 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 you don't beg. You don't beg. We are not supposed to beg. We don't beg. Yeah. We don't chase people around for money. But yet, yet, this is happening. So what that means is there are gaps in our knowledge. There are gaps in, in, in our wisdom. There's, there's wisdom we don't have. There's something. There are graces that are still missing that we still yeah. need to obtain mm. so that we can stop begging. And instead, people will come and beg us. Then we will now show them, let me teach you how to fish. That's the point of all of this. Mm. That we will take hold so that we can teach others to also take hold and not beg. So that our children will not be begging. They won't even beg yeah. us because they will know how to obtain us. Mm. That's how we take territory for God's kingdom. So I want yeah. us to take the next three minutes as well to pray and ask the Lord, Father, whatever gaps in my knowledge, in my ability that are still there, that are causing me to beg, that are that that I I, I that are causing me to that have not that that I don't know how to obtain what you have for me. Father, would you just fill those gaps in my knowledge? Give me strategy, divine right. kingdom strategy that will help me obtain in a manner that is worthy of your kingdom, that is worthy of the name of Jesus. We cannot be plastering Jesus' name on our businesses and be begging and be acting out of the ordinary and in any way that is not excellent. So I'm sorry to call everybody out here today, but we have to pray and we have to petition the kingdom of God and decree and and make up our minds just as Daniel did. He made up his mind that he will not eat of the king's food. Let us make up our minds on the altar today that we will no longer beg. Starting today, let us get into the spirit right now and ask the Lord for those gaps in wisdom, those gaps in our knowledge and understanding that are keeping us from obtaining all of those things and instead causing us to beg people of the kingdom of darkness let us pray right now in the name of Jesus Amen. 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 One final charge. Psalm 34. If you have your Bibles, you can read along. I'm just reading the first portion. But it says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make its boast to the Lord. The humble shall hear of it and be glad. 
Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from every fear. They looked to him and were radiant and their faces were not ashamed. This My poor God. man cried out and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps all around those who fear him and delivers yeah. them. Oh, yeah. taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who trusts in him. Blessed is the man who trusts in him. This yeah. poor man cried out and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. Not some of his troubles, not a little bit, not 10% of his troubles, all his mm. troubles, all his troubles. I don't know what is plaguing you on this altar today. I don't know what you slept at night and dreamt of. I don't know. But I do know that the Lord wanted me to read this scripture because you are probably thinking, oh, how, how is this thing going to be sorted out? How am I going to pay this bill? How am I going to settle this debt? How am I going to get out of this um, financial situation or even spiritual situation? Perhaps you are still in bondage and you are on this call today. Perhaps you are still in bondage. Whether it's uh, family issues, whether it's bloodline, whether it's curses and covenants, who, nothing is too big for God to handle. Because it says, I called unto the Lord and he heard me out yeah. of his holy hill and he saved me from mm. every trouble, from every mm. fear. Mm. Mm. The angel of the Lord encamps all around those who fear him and yep. he delivers them. Yeah. Taste and see that the Lord is good and blessed yeah. is the man who trusts in him. I want us to take the next few moments and just settle in with this word today and ask for salvation from every trouble. Let's call upon the name that is above all names. The name of Jesus is our strong tower, our shield, our ever present help in times of trouble. Let us call upon that precious name today and call upon him and know and think of that problem that trouble all your troubles you can bring all of them at once god is not asking you to get in line bring all the troubles because the angel of the lord is encamps around those who trust him let us open our mouths mm. now and pray
verse 10 of that same chapter said says the young lions lack and suffer hunger but those who seek the lord shall not yeah. lack any good thing come you children listen to me i will teach you the fear of the lord who is the man who desires life and loves many good days many days that he may see good i want to just reread verse 10 again and let that be our focus the young lions lack and suffer hunger but those who seek the lord shall not lack any good thing the young lions there if you know anything about lions which that's a very popular animal we know they are very fierce they are strong they are the kings of the jungle right mm-hmm. they, they are young so they have a lot of energy mm. right in in today's day and age they will be the ones with all the accolades the ones with all the education the smartest mm. the brightest in our eyes mm. yet mm. scripture is saying that in spite of all of that they suffer hunger but those who seek the lord shall not lack any good thing if you are thirsty if you are thirsty on this call today there's something you are lacking you are like i don't know what it is but there's something missing i cannot put my finger on it i have prayed i have fasted i have sought the lord i have done everything but there's still something missing i have good news for you scripture says that those who seek the lord shall not lack any good thing any good thing we know that good and perfect gifts come from above we know that god gives gifts and doesn't add sorrow so when i said that they do not lack when the bible says they do not lack any good thing it is exactly what that sounds like god does not play games with his word he doesn't say things in an obscure corner for you to try and figure out it literally says those who seek the lord will not lack any good thing mm. what are you lacking in your business what are you is it strategy what are you lacking in your family is there strife at home what are you lacking in your spiritual walk is what is it what 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 is it, what is bothering your soul what are those things that make you anxious and fearful what are you lacking if we're being very honest, I know that I'm going to pray this prayer with everything I've got because there are things that I'm lacking that I need to obtain in the spirit. Sometimes the answer will come through people. It will come through a sermon you randomly found on YouTube. It may come through a stranger talking to you in the grocery store in a restaurant. The answer can come through dreams. It can, like, it can come in any form. Please don't put God in a box, right? What, I'm, what, what, the, what the scripture is saying here is that we don't lack anything. So it's possible that those things have come to us, but we were so absent-minded, we never took hold of it. So we'll ask God for mercy, but we also know that in his mercy, he can restore. Perhaps there are things that we had that we gave away and now we are missing it, right? Maybe it's finances. Maybe we mismanaged money. And God is like, I gave that money to you. What did you do with it? You went to eat. You went to do enjoyment. So now the money is gone. So we will ask God for mercy. What? Maybe it's our marriage. Maybe there are things that we we're meant to do. Or maybe no. Maybe it's not even our fault. Which, whatever the case may be, what the enemy has stolen, whether or maybe we never even got it in the first place. Regardless, if you are lacking anything today, healing for your soul and body, healing for your marriage, healing for your relationships, restoration, Whatever it is, God is here, present on the altar. He's ready to give you good things that you may not lack anymore. It is never his will for us to suffer. We already know this. We are grown Christians. We know this. But sometimes we need a reminder. Mm. So I want us to take the next few minutes now to just press in as hard as you can and ask, oh God, for this thing that mm. I am lacking, please be as specific as possible. If it is healing for your child, if it is your parents' issue, if it is your own issue, if it is your business, whatever it is. If it is the dream you had last night that woke you up or the thing that entered into your room and you were like, what is this? I'm telling you, like the cra- craziest of things. Don't, nothing is too small mm. and nothing is too big to place on this altar today because his word has come forth. Mm that we will not lack any good thing. He, give, he gives good gifts. So let us take mm-hmm. a moment right now 
the next few minutes let us press in with everything it is our faith god is going to respond to our faith today maybe you are thinking oh maybe it's not no if you think that you have already missed it i want you to press in because we do not know the day or the time or the hour that god is going to respond to that prayer that god is going to respond to your faith so press in with everything you have right now and let's pray in the holy ghost let us ask god whatever we are lacking that he should provide in the name of jesus he is jehovah jireh and that is not just for money it is for anything we need he is a provider let us open our mouths now and pray Every single day of our life. So, Father, show up for us today. the area of God Thank you, Shadi. God bless you. What a powerful Amen. session. Madam Adenike, God bless you as well. Guys, this is what it means to be a marketplace minister. When you can bring the presence of God and the knowledge. If there is noise, please, would you be kind to mute? Please, 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 please. Thank you. On Mondays, we have our business network fellowship. It's a time for us to examine the theme of the month, to look at what God has given us to talk about this month. I was meant to speak today, but um, I'm on a trip, a business trip. My Minister Yemi so graciously offered to speak on my behalf. Thank you, Minister Yemi. I want all of us to open our hearts to receive from this man of God. Is someone that's an older brother to me. I respect him immensely. We all carry different graces in the leadership, from Amy to myself to Minister Yemi. And if you are open, you can really receive. The prayer supervisory team are power packed. When they are praying, none of us should be muted. Chadi gave such a powerful charge and a powerful prayer session that I know that she definitely heard from God. That prayer point is valid. I have been young, now I am old. I have never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed beg for bread. And so I watch some of us on this altar and we are muted praying a prayer point like that. If you wouldn't pray for yourself, would you pray for your seed, your children? If you don't pray now, there is a possibility your seed can beg for bread. 
And that's why we labor on the altar. Because what we do can affect generations. It's not just about us. Amy preached one message one day that was so powerful. Talking about how we will see if what we have done in our Christian experience can affect generations or it just ends with us. We must be selfless. We must think of our children. They are innocent. They are innocent. Let's give them a platform. You know, I had a meeting with a spiritual mentor yesterday in Atlanta. One thing he was telling me was like, he was binding the devils in his father's house for 22 years. And then one day he said to himself, ah, it's been 22 years old. These devils should have died by now. Like, what's going on? What's happening? He failed to shift his mindset. Yes, you can bind and cast and demolish altars. When you're done doing that, there is yet a mindset you must embrace. It is this mindset that your generation can build upon. And so one of the ways we give our children a fighting chance is when we open our mouths to pray for them, if not for us, if not for our business. I have been young, now I am old. I have never seen the righteous. The key word there is righteous. You have to be righteous. And so I want us to take that prayer point again because it is too important to miss. And if you have not had a chance to pray, it's your time to unmute and pray. I know a person on this altar as I speak, eating the fruit of her father's reward, her father's labor. He was a righteous man. When you give your children a platform, a springboard for them to begin life with, indeed you have been righteous. A good man leaves an inheritance for his children's children. So I want us to examine that carefully. And before we go into this session, let's take that prayer point one more time. David said, I had been young. Do you realize that he himself begged for bread? It was his seed, Solomon, that never begged for bread. If you're not careful, you can beg for bread. So let us unmute and take that prayer point from the depth of our heart. That Father, make this my testimony. As I step into righteous living, I don't want to beg for bread. One more time, let's begin to pray that prayer point. La visa cambra dan telabasi sigende deski alisa terebo kebandel in Jesus name we pray Amen. 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 Father we thank you for this day and time would you open our hearts to receive your word on divine health teach us things covered in scriptures for our good 
I pray for the vessel you are going to use to speak to us. Would you anoint us? Would you anoint him, Father, to speak words that are spirit and life? Let our hearts be open so that as kingdom entrepreneurs, we can take care of our health. And as marketplace ministers, we can even do better and bring the reality of divine health to the marketplace. Thank you, Father, for answer praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Over to you, Minister Yemi. Please be attentive and open your hearts to receive. God bless. Thank you. And thank you for the prayers. Um, today we're going to be talking on the grace for health. Grace for health. But before we start, let's have a short prayer. Father, we thank you for today. And Lord, we thank you because you watch over your words in order to perform them. Lord, Lord Jesus, you said, where two or three are gathered in your name, you promise to be in our midst. So Lord Jesus, we welcome you this evening to our midst as we go into your holy word. The entrance of your words gives light and it gives understanding to the simple. So I pray for light and understanding as we go into your holy word. Let your word be a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. That you open our eyes to see that which you have prepared for us in this season that I have not seen. Open our ears to hear what you have prepared for us that ears have not heard. And enlarge the capacity of our hearts to receive and to retain that which you have prepared for us that have never entered any man's heart. So Lord Holy Spirit, by the Spirit of truth, guide us, O God, into all truth as we go into your holy word. In Jesus' mighty and wonderful name, I pray. And everybody says, Amen. 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 I just uh, just a little uh, instruction before we, I start teaching. If you if you have any ailment, any sickness, anything that is burdening your body physically, or spiritually, please type it on the comment box. Your name, what the issue is, what the name of the problem is. Type if it's family members or friends or, or daughters or son. Just type their name, type disease and everything, and put it on the comment box as I'm teaching. And I believe we, we're going to receive a mighty miracle today. Uh, please, let's just follow that instruction. Uh, give respect of what you think of me. Just let us do it. <clears throat> so today we're looking at the grace for health. Grace for health. Now, let me just recap on you know, some of our uh, definitions of grace so we can understand when we're talking about grace, what the Lord is trying to do for us. Really, in summary, by the time we summarize everything, because the multifaceted dimension of grace is many, and how God manifested. But by the, but the summary of this grace is that it's us being helped by God. So grace is being helped by God. That's the summary of grace, that God is involved in whatever it is and whatever dimension or multifaceted area that you are being helped. Old purpose of this that is a being called God behind you, beside you, around you, helping you to accomplish that. So grace is being held by God. You know, you look at Exodus, Exodus 33, verse 17. You know, God here speaking to Moses. Moses was having a dialogue with God. And in Exodus 33, 17, you know, Moses says, so the Lord said to Moses, so God's response to the dialogue with Moses, God said, I, God, will also do this thing that you have spoken. I, God, I will do also all these things that you have spoken, for you have found grace in my sight. Now, who's going to do it? God said he will do it. So every little step you take as God directs you, you will know that it is God behind those actions that you're taking, but not you. And that is why you have victory and result. So God said to Isaac, you know, I can see that God, because he created all things and he created all the laws, God is the only one who can change things and transform things irrespective 
of his own law. You know, so God told Isaac, God said, don't go to Egypt. Stay here. So, and I'll bless it. And Isaac sowed, and the Bible says he reaped a hundredfold in the time of famine when everybody ran to Egypt. So this grace is being helped by God. The Abraham go through the scriptures. You see Apostle Paul talking, uh, and I think let me check, and that's in the book of Corinthians. Yeah, Corinthians chapter uh, 15, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 10, when he said, you know. It is by the grace of God I am what I am. It is by the grace of God. And his grace towards me was not in vain. And he says, I labor more abundantly than they all. And he says, yes, not I. But the grace of God which was with me. The grace of God which was with me. So grace is God assisting and helping us in every area of our lives, every area of our lives. And this is the blessing that we have as believers that ought to separate us, to put a distinction just like day and night between us and the Gentiles, those who are not born again. But there are things that the world needs to see that will draw the world and draw them to run into the church for assistance, for help, because they are seeing a glory they have never seen before. Can you imagine if we are all walking in the grace of God in, in, in all the multifaceted side of our lives? Grace in health, we are sound and healthy. Grace in all the dimensions of grace. The church will be filled with people. You don't even need to do evangelism, evangelism but they will see it. And the Bible says what they see is what they will do. Say they will be they drawn and they will drive them first, forcefully forcing themselves to the church. But if they don't see it, and they don't see a difference in a believer's life, why would I want to come to know your God? I'm not interested. I'm not interested. But if you're seeing that grace, and you're seeing the multiplying, the patient effect of that grace, then you want to come. So we've been talking about grace this month, this month, I mean this year, and this month is grace for health. And let us look at Galatians chapter 1. So I want to lay the foundation out, and I'm going to use two case stories today, uh, Moses and Caleb in the Old Covenant, which is the shadow, this grace in manifestation. And I also see in the New Covenant, plenty of people who walk in the grace of God and the grace for health. So Galatians chapter 1, if you read from, from verse 3, Galatians 1, reading from verse 3, and we'll read to verse 5. So it says, grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace and peace. This is Apostle Paul saluting the Galatians and he's saluting them just like talking to us now in our days to say grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. He says who gave himself for our sins to rescue us, to deliver us from, the, from this present evil age according to the will of our God and Father. So we see the will of God and Father in play here. That by the grace and the peace of God, our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, He has rescued us from this present evil age. And verse 5 says, To whom be glory okay. for ever. Amen. Amen. So you will need the grace of God and the grace for health, for divine health, to accomplish God's will here on the earth. We need it. There is no one, there is nobody who is sick and not healthy that can fulfill the will of God. We will spend more time on the bed than being out there in the God's purpose. So you see people in the body of Christ now who's attacking but uh deliverance ministry, attacking healing ministry, attacking everybody, and they do not know that without the grace of health upon our life, we can't even finish the we can't even complete the will of God. So if you look at case study uh, Moses, if we read Deuteronomy uh, chapter 31, Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 14. Now God was speaking to Moses, but it was end toward the end of Moses' life. So they say the Lord said to Moses, 
Now the day of your death is near. God speaking to Moses. Now, when we go to chapter 34, verse 1, Deuteronomy chapter 34, verse 1, is then Moses climbed Mount Nebo from the plains of Moab to the top of Flag Fisda across from Jericho. There the Lord showed him the whole land from Gilead to Dan. This is Moses in his old age. I can assure you, some of us who are young will not be able to climb this mountain because it's high. It's a very high mountain. But in his old age, Bible that Moses climbed Mount Nebo from the plains of Moab to the top of Pisgah across, across from Jericho. In order, he had to climb so high in order for God, God to show him the territory of Gilead to Dan. That the people of God will enter as a promised land. Now, same Deuteronomy chapter 34, verse 7, now says this. He says, Moses was a hundred and twenty years old when he died, yet his eyes were not weak, nor his strength gone. Even in his old age, so that means even the death that he died. It wasn't as if he died because of any sickness. It was just God saying, it's time for me to take you home. And his spirit departed and his body left. He left his body. So his body was on the earth and his spirit descended to, ascended to heaven. Now you will know, I think it's in the book of Jude, when the Bible said that Satan was, Satan and the angel of God was having a discussion about Moses', Moses body. You know, and the angel had to rebuke Satan to say, Lord, rebuke you. So his body was healthy. It was fresh. And he could still climb at that old age of 120. He could climb a high mountain. And you can see the graceful health in his body that he was still strong and healthy even at his old age. So he was able to be fruitful up to old age. Up to his old age. It wasn't sickness that took him off. Like many people have been taken by sickness or diseases or infirmity. But the grace for health was in him and sustained him all the way to, his, to the time that he had to his spirit had to depart from his body. I mean, the word death simply means your spirit has left your body. So the body is not functioning any longer. The spirit does not die, but the spirit ascends back to God. In, so when we look at a uh, second case study, uh, and that's in the book of Joshua, Joshua chapter 16, and we'll, sorry, Joshua chapter chapter 14, then we'll read from verse 6 to 12. Joshua 14, verse 6 to 12. So you see also in Joshua what happened, and this is the account of Caleb. You know, so Caleb, said, uh, verse 6 says, then the children of Judah came to Joshua in Gilgal, and Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, the Canaanite, said to him, saying to Joshua, You know the word which the Lord said to Moses, the man of God, concerning you and me in Tadesh Barnea. He says, I was 40 years old when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me to Tadesh Barnea to spy out the land. And I brought back the word to him as it was in my heart. The verse 8 says, nevertheless, nevertheless, the lion was going on. Can you hear me? Okay. Can you hear me? Can somebody yes, just can hear you? Yes. Yes, we can. can hear you. Yes, sir, we can hear you. I thought I was caught up. So verse 8 says, nevertheless, my brethren, you went up with me made the heart of the people, my brethren who went up with me, made the heart of the people melt. But I wholly followed the Lord my God. He says, so Moses swore on that day, saying, surely the land where your foot, what foot has trodden shall be your inheritance and your children's forever, because you have wholly followed the Lord my God. And now, behold, the Lord has kept me alive 
the Lord has kept me alive. As he said, these 45 years, ever since the Lord spoke this word to Moses, while Israel wandered in the wilderness. And he says, and now, here I am this day, 85 years old. He says, and yet I am as strong this day as on the day that Moses sent me. Just as my strength was then, when he was 40 years old. See, now his strength is still there for war. Just as my strength was then, so now is my strength for war, both going out and for coming in. He said, now therefore give me this mountain of which the Lord has spoken in that day. So we can see the shadow of the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ in at work here, even in the life of these individuals. He said, the Lord has kept me alive. The grace of God, the grace for health has kept him alive that his strength at 85 was still the same as when he was 40 years old. That's amazing. That is amazing. When in your old age, you are still strong like a 20-year-old girl or 20-year-old boy, that is a grace for health. Thank you, Jesus. So we see now we see this grace in the life of Moses, in the life of uh, 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 Caleb, to the testament you see in the life of Paul, we see in the life of, of, of Peter that they walked in this grace, the apostles. So you see, it is also good to note one thing as we're talking about this grace. That even if you look at the story of the Israelites, there's something amazing that this same grace was bestowed upon them for health. Because the Bible says, even though they were in the wilderness, you see, not one of them was feeble. Not one. Can you imagine? Because the, uh, the, the, the theologian says there will be over a million people. Can you imagine a million people under the covering of God and not one was feeble? And the word feeble means not one was sick. There was no cough. There was no malaria. There was no uh, uh, chest pain. There was no chest cough. There was no cold. There was nothing. Not one was feeble. Not one was sick. That is amazing. So the grace of God for health was upon these people, that God kept them, that not a single soul, over a million people, was sick. So they were kept under the power of God, the power of His grace. And that's why Apostle Paul could boast in the grace of God in 1 Corinthians 15.10, when he says, yes, he labored. Because this grace for health, when it's there, you are able to labor, you are able to do, to put your strength, to work very hard in what you're doing, but yet that grace for health is upon you. That you do not fall sick, you do not have any malaria, you do not have any sickness. You are strong and you are healthy. This is amazing. So Apostle Paul could boast, he said, by the grace of God, I am what I am. He said, his grace towards me was not even in vain. He said, I labored more abundantly than everybody else. And he says, but it is the grace of God that was with me. That's the health that was upon him. You know, if you're if you if you a student of the Bible, you will see in so many places that people said, oh, Apostle Paul was sick. He was not well. There was one place that said, turn in the flesh. And people just look for so many ways that I call them the un, un, unbeliever, the unbeliever believer. Or, 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 I don't know how to, People who don't believe in scripture, you say Apostle Paul was sick. But the Bible is saying he himself is using his mouth to say he labored more than everybody else. But not him, but the grace of God that was with him. After any sick person labor more than anybody else. That is the topic for another day. So the grace for health is so important in order for us to finish well and to finish strong. It's not just finishing well, but to finish strong. You know. I'm a believer of this fact. In 2 Timothy chapter 2, chapter 1, verse 10, I believe strongly that a believer should say the time they want to exit this earth. It should be the one to determine the time they want to leave. Because your body is so strong, your body refuses to die. You are the one that says, Lord, upon you do I commit my spirit. 
and then you release your spirit to God and it leaves and the body just drops. Healthy. There's everything is still strong. No weakness, no sickness, no diseases. So that sickness is not taking us out. And that second uh, Timothy chapter 1 verse 10 says that the Lord Jesus Christ has abolished death. Amazing when I read the scripture. So I began to do a word search, abolish. And by the time you find out what the word abolish means, it simply means that death has been rendered inoperative. It simply means death has been rendered inactive. It simply means death has been brought to nothing. Do not. So death has no power. This thing in death has been removed through Christ. He said through Jesus Christ, who has abolished death. And he goes on to say he has brought he has brought life and immortality to light. Through Jesus Christ, he has abolished death and he has brought to light. He has brought life and he has brought immortality. Immortality means eternal life to light, to us. And this is where we are. This is where we stand. So if a man was 40 years old and his strength was still the same when he was 85, this is what we also to be looking for, to be praying for. So all of these examples that I've given here, I mean, they are plethora of examples. Uh, our time is short, so I just speak few, you know, for this teaching. They all finished well, all finished strong to their old age. They were still strong to their old age. So this grace for health is a gift from God through Jesus Christ and is available to all of us. It's available to us. This gift is almost as in, uh, it's a divine, I call it divine health insurance. You know, that's what this is. This grace is, is for health. You know, that, that's what it represents. I call it divine health insurance. You know, I remember a testimony of late Kenneth Hagen, um when he was talking about the will of God and what happened to him. Because this is this divine insurance cover, I call it divine insurance cover, is to is always to those who are the center of the will of God. It's always to those. So this is our divine insurance to cover us. And to cover us so that we are as long as we are at the center of God's will. Now, Lake Kenneth Hagen was giving an example. Uh, there was a time he was hospitalized. He was at the hospital. This is a man teaching about healing, has overcome healing in so many ways. But this time he was at the hospital uh, at some point in his life while he was working with the Lord Jesus Christ. But while he was making the inquiries, Lord, what's going on? How come there's delay to this healing? How come I've not been healed? I've been pressing into these things. So it was revealed to him that he was fully not fulfilling the will of God. He was fully not fulfilling the will of God in one area of his ministry, especially in the prophetic. And what happened? The grace lifted. The grace lifted. But when he repented, after his repentance, the grace was restored and he went on to finish well and finish strong in old age. Now, the grace of God can be lifted. This grace can be lifted and how? This I'll give you four areas that the grace or even anointing of God can be lifted in a person's life. And number one is, if you are outside the will of God, if you are outside God's will, his grace will be lifted, even his anointing will be lifted, because you are not at the place where God wants you to discharge that grace and that anointing, great for health. If you are in rebellion, or two, if you are in rebellion against the will of God, so that means you know his will and you have decided to go against it. So that is rebellion, so you have engaged your will to do contrary knowing the right way, or you went the opposite way, you chose with your will, you exercise your will 
to be against the will of God, that grace will be lifted. And the third one is if you are in great disobedience to the guidance or the leading of the Holy Spirit, to the point of grieving Him, to the point that you grieve Him, the grace will be lifted. And let me go back to what I said earlier at the beginning when we're looking for the summary of the, def- of the definition of God's grace, which is being held by God. Now, I want to just give that summary so it can help us to know that, okay, if God removes his help, then who are we? Who am I? I'm finished. I'm finished. God removes his help. So, if I'm outside his will, he will remove his help because he's not going to follow me to the dream my own thing. When he has a plan and purpose for me, if I'm rebelling, that means rebelling means I know the will of God. But I say, "No, Lord, I'm not doing it. I'm doing this instead." The same thing happens. Thirdly, if the if I'm disobeying the guidance of the Holy Spirit, who's giving me the structure and what to do? Example: Holy Three says, "Apologize to somebody," and you refuse. Say, "No, I'm not going to." He or she did that to me first. You are going against His will because they are spoken to you. So you have been disobedient, and as such, you are grieving him, and as such, then the grace will be lifted, meaning the help of God is no longer with you. I can assure you, unless you go back to start doing his will, God will not, God is not a more God that is just going to be helping. He will just remove himself. Then number four, this is a very difficult one for most people, for most of us. God will lift his grace if you are a people pleaser instead of God. A lot of people, even churches, even if you're a leader of a church, if you're a leader of anything or what God, whatever God has asked you to do, or you look at men's face, and what are they going to say about it if I go and do this? Or what are they going to laugh me to scorn? Going to... So you, if you are people pleaser other than God, God will move himself, will lift that grace upon such a person or ministry or leader or whoever you are that God has asked you to do things. But you rather these people because you don't want to look foolish in front of people. And this is the same thing that happened to King Saul. King Saul, the old covenant, King Saul disobeyed God. He, and the reason he disobeyed God, he even said it himself. He disobeyed God to please the people. He disobeyed God. He said his people, you know, was trying to make these people happy and he disobeyed what God asked him to do and the grace lifted from him. You know, the grace lifted from him and the Bible says the, the, the evil spirit even came in to not begin to torment him. You know, so these are the four areas that we must be careful that we do not fall into the trap of Satan. In number one, if you are outside the will of God, Grace will be lifted. Grace for health will be lifted. If you are rebellion against the will of God, His grace for health will be lifted. If you are in great disobedience to the guidance of the Holy Spirit, up to the point of grieving Him, His grace will be lifted. If you are a people pleaser instead of God, His grace will be lifted for, for health. Because like I said earlier, those people who had the grace for health they finish strong that even in their old age, their bodies were still functioning like a 20 years old, 30 years old, 40 year old body. So they were able to finish well and strong. That is the purpose of it. It's not for us to do our will. The grace is that grace is not upon us to do our will, to do our, you know, whatever we desire. And some of us, you know, we've experienced this. Or some of us are even experiencing some stuff now that we're thinking is the devil. And if it's, if something persists and is there for such a long time, these are the areas that you need to ask questions to find out. Lord, why are you not helping me in this area? Why am I not getting breakthrough? Why the long delay? We need to search these four areas. Lay your heart before the Lord to say, Lord, where have I gone wrong? Where have I fought? Because the problem and the fault is always with us and not with God. The fourth is never on God's side. It's always 100% right, God. But the fourth is always from our side. So is there anything that I've done, am I outside your will in this area of my life? 
am I rebelling in any area in constant to ask me to do? Am I disobedient in any area to the Holy Spirit? Dis- disobedient with God can be just a small thing. The Holy Spirit can just ask you to do this thing. It could be a small thing and you decide not to do it. It doesn't need to be a big thing that God has to go and start this or start the ministry or start that. No, it will be a small, tiny thing. If we just say, God, go and forgive you, it will be, it will be a tiny stop. All, disob- all disobedience is disobedience. That's the thing with the Lord. And this is the fourth one is the area that we all have issues. People please that. When God asks you to do something, you look at people around and say, Oh my God, are you sure? Maybe God said, Go and minister to that person. And there's crowd there, you are thinking, God. Why today? You know, why can I do it another time? You know, so we need to look at yeah, issues has been persisting for a while. So God can do this and do so many things. And when, let's say, uh, your disobedience to God and you fall under sickness, or it's, it's an attack in one area of your life, finances, it could be any area, it could be your marriage. At times, when God do these things, when people fall into sickness or something is happening, it's because he's trying to get your attention. So if God removes himself, God pulls himself back from the help that he's been rendering to each and every one of us because of any area of that we have disobeyed or been rebellious or outside of his will or pleasing people, he's only trying to get our attention. So when God pulls back and you now see that while wow, the devil is bashing from all sides he's trying to get your attention so that when he gets your attention and you repent then he can now restore or god wants to restore hallelujah but he's a good god so he wants to always restore he wants to get your attention when he pulls back so like i said grace is being helped by god so if god pulls away from the help you know you're on your own <laughs> i'm on my own <laughs> and then you now realize that without this God, you can do nothing. You know, so how do we enter into this grace? Good question as a roundup so that we can pray then close. How do we enter the grace of God? This grace for health. Because we all need to finish strong and finish well. Even in our old age, under 20. I don't want to be under 20 that I'm having aches in my body and getting cold and all those stuff and getting tata and that and that. I want to be 120 strong like a 40 year old man. You know, and, I, and I believe that for every one of us. So how do we enter this grace? Well, it is through faith. Everything in the kingdom of God is through faith. By faith. You know. So Romans chapter 5 verse 2 and my last scripture so about to close Romans chapter 5 verse 2 says and I quote it says through whom also we have access by faith into this grace in which we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God so through Christ also we have access by faith into this grace in which we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Number one. Which are number two, as in Romans chapter 8, verse 10 to 11. Every believer on earth that, has, that is in existence to read, recite, meditate on that scripture daily, every single day. Every single day. I do that. It's the most powerful scripture for us in the body of Christ to live this life of grace or health in God. Grace or help in God. We should meditate on this scripture daily. Romans chapter 8, verse 10 through to 11. If Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit man is life because of righteousness. If the spirit that raised up Jesus from the dead dwelt in you and in me. He, that spirit that raised up Christ from the dead shall quicken, shall give life to your mortal body by his spirit that dwelleth in you. That spirit, the Holy Ghost, who is now in you, 
it will infuse life into your cells, into your members, into your flesh, into your bones, into your marrow, into your organs. And your organs and your body live. And there's power, such of power. I can assure you, sometimes, even like today, I was saying to God, this strength that I have, where is it from? Where is this strength from? I am strong. I was carrying heavy load and climbing and walking up the hill. Today, I wasn't panting. I was strong and I walked all the way for at least 20 minutes without load up to like one mile. It was exactly one mile. Can you imagine walking one mile up the hill? Heavy load on my backpack was full of heavy stuff and I carried and walked all the way. After that, I got home. I was in panting and every single day I asked God. And because this is, I recite this scripture. I'm not joking. I've made it over say, 20 years now, 18 years. Same for every day. If the spirit that raised up Jesus dwells in me, he that raised up Christ will also infuse, give life to my mortal body. Mortal body. He's talking about your flesh, not your spirit. He will give life to your flesh by the spirit that dwelleth in you. So that is what is infusing life into you. And imagine reciting this every day. The power of God surging through your system, giving life to every organ, every cell, every bone, muscles, receiving life. It would be amazing. And I believe this is it that will make that scripture in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 10, that I quoted earlier. That Christ has abolished death. So death has no right in your body because your body is dead to sin. And Jesus has brought life and immortality to light. That word immortality is the strongest word that you have life and you have eternal life. That life is eternal that is flown through your being. I don't want to discuss this side of this immortality because it's something I've been meditating for for decades. That the Lord has been showing me. And I know that that is where God is taking the body of Christ. You see what the world is going, looking for? Looking for. They want to live forever. Nobody wants to die. They're paying so much money. Science is doing so many things. It's in the church. The answer is in the church. But God has not opened the church to that dimension yet. Even me, I've not been released to speak about it. I've spoken about it in two different conferences that I've been to. But the word immortality, we have not enter that one yet. It's not even, not even being discussed that much in the church. I've done a search. It's just one or two pastors that are talking about immortality. Where you get to a place whereby <laughs> even the body doesn't want to die. Doesn't want to die. <laughs> oh, Lord have mercy. Anyway, so where so please, if you can take time, when maybe when you wake up in the morning, even though they have time in the afternoon, maybe just Two, just like two verses, eight, chapter 8 of Romans 10 and 11, just two verses. And do that in the morning, 10 minutes, 15 in the afternoon, anytime you have time for you speak. Recite this and speaking this to yourself that your body, the Holy Spirit is giving life to my physical body. So you can walk in this grace for health that God has given us. So everything in the kingdom of God is accessible to faith by faith. When you're speaking those words to your body and giving instruction to that body, that body, you're speaking it by faith. With total belief, truth, basic, your faith and the foundation for your faith is based on scriptures. You know, so you're saying to your body, the Holy Spirit is, is life to this mortal body, this physical flesh, sustaining it, holding it, and infusing life into it. It's, not, it's almost as if it's not even your food that's infusing life into your body again, but the power of God. But we only enter and assess this through faith. And God is so fair. He's a fair God. He's a, he's a just God. He's a, he's a God who shows no partiality to anybody. So God has opened the door to all of us. He has given us a fair ground play by faith that by faith we can access his grace for health and, and through our confession 
we can begin to confess and speak this and make it our reality. Whether we like it or not, Satan will want to deceive us and lie to us when it comes to speaking words out in order to, in order to you know, receive this blessing that God has given us. It is ignited, it is accessed, it is opened, it is accessible through our words. It is accessible through our words because the words that we speak as it contains power and the word is so powerful that you will think oh you're speaking now it's not big there i just spoke so what's the big no no you didn't just speak those words have power behind them for example let me use a, 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 a just a natural example you know somebody says to you maybe a wife or a husband your friend just 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 come, uh, give it a huge comment comment you know and, 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 and you know just say oh look at you're so pretty you're so beautiful i like this i like that and begin to give you beautiful comment and beautiful comment even though if you are sad at that time i'm telling you start smiling in the next two three minutes now they have not given you money they are not giving a car a house they have not given you clothes they have not given you some big present because that chain reaction, you know, it's just words. Tells the words are powerful. Just ordinary compliment. Good compliment. You know, because the chain reaction that you achieve and you begin to smile and you begin to laugh. And then the same words, bad words, horrible words, spoken to a person can also change their mood. And you see the same person begin to cry. Just words. Nothing else. There was no present. There was no gift. The present just spoke words. So to tell me that words are not powerful, no, if what can change the countenance of a human being, I can assure you, when you speak that word by faith, nothing can stop it. Satan is attacking the body of Christ through this. Do you understand this process? It's going to diminish his kingdom. So as we round up, because I want us to pray. 730. I want us to pray quickly on all those stuff that we put and I want us to pray uh, about meeting for this grace for health. I want it to pour like rain upon every single one of us on this platform. That when you get home, you know when rain falls on your clothes, it soaks into your clothes. When you get home and hug somebody, the, 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 their body will be wet too with clothes. I mean with, with, with water. Because rain has fallen upon you. So I'm trusting God tonight that he's anointing for grace will fall heavily upon the house that will affect our homes in our businesses in every area and everybody that is sick the power of God will hit them wherever they are and they will be completely healed that will ask for mercy mercy you know whatever may have caused delay in any area of our lives in health ask for mercy in any way maybe we have abused our body through the food that we put in I will ask God to forgive us because you remember this is God's temple where a temple is where the spirit dwells so the spirit of God dwells in this temple so if I abuse this temple of God by putting wrong stuff with even wrong food into it then whatever happens and God removing his grace for health and then the body begins to malfunction then we repent you know any area of our life that spiritually that we have allowed our body, maybe what we've done to our bodies and everything that is not uh, pleasing to God, we just repent in that area. Those who are, are sick, you know, those who are trusting God for finances and everything, repent in that area as well. In any way you have, you know, abused the resources of God, but any money that comes to your hand, remember, or anything that you get in this life, as we are talking about grace, that means God's divine help. An assistant was there. Make sure that that money comes into your hand and into your account. Now, if you mismanage that money, it's God's resources that are brought to you. You have to repent in that area. And mismanagement means you've used the money for what God didn't ask you to use it for. <laughs> You're not asking the owner. You know, so we need to get to a place where we know that everything that comes to us is not ours. You know, so. That's another place to repent in your health, in any area that will abuse ourselves through food, 
you know, through any spiritual stuff, you know, ask God for repent, and then we ask His power to come upon the house. Let it, His grace for help, let it rain upon the house, and anybody that is sick, let that grace fall upon them, that they'll be completely healed this evening, to the glory of God. So I want us to, as I finish now, I hope you are blessed. If you are blessed, please type in the comment box and you've been blessed by this message. And then we're going to unmute. We're going to pray two prayers. Prayer number one is prayer of forgiveness. In any area that we are um, falling short of God's glory, that we repent of it as a house. You can, you can be repenting for other people, family members. You know, you might not be in that category. You can repent for family members or anybody else that you're trusting God for, spouses. Then the second one is we now pray that God, let your grace for health fall upon this house and fall upon everybody that has typed in this comment box that needs a touch of me. Can we on this, please? Thank you. So the fourth prayer is praying for mercy. That daddy we're praying for mercy today upon every one that is sick everyone that is sick we are asking for mercy check on the comment box anybody that is sick we are asking for your mercy in any area of our lives that we are falling short that we have abused our body that we have put the wrong food in the body that we have put the wrong substances that we have used something that we ought not to drink or eat this thing that we have done spiritually that has affected us physically we ask for Mercy, I'm supposed to repent. Anybody that is on this um, um, on this uh, chat that's not feeling well, I want to ask for mercy for them as well. Let's see if there's anybody there, okay, there's nobody who so wants to ask for mercy. Who so wants to ask for mercy, oh Lord, that God will be merciful to us. Let us just unmute and just pray. Thank you. 
Mr. Amy, you are muted, sir. Sorry, in Jesus' name we pray. Uh, just to round up the prayer. But I, I want to thank you. Lord, in Jesus' name, we want our bodies to you. Only accept it. Father God, every single one of people Lord, will present our bodies to you. That is take our journey to manifest your power to pull off. Let the Romans that are in the same system into manifesting our people. We will not begin to energize the life of our physical member, our body, our bones, our cells, our flesh, our marrow, and all the 12 systems in our body. Let them be filled right now, oh God with the life of God, that no sickness will have replaced in us. No diseases can live in that body and survive. No infirmity or any evil spirit can dwell within. That the life of God will feed and permeate our whole being. That will begin to manifest the strength of God. That daddy we will live to 120 years, even and above. We will be the one to say it's time to go. And our body will be healthy like a 20-year-old body. Like a 30 year old, but even in under 30 years old. Father, we thank you, Lord Jesus. Lord, you said you've been a miss where two or three are dead, and you are here today. You have taught us today. We thank you for all that you have done. Daddy, we thank you for the testimony that will come out tonight. Receive all the glory, Father. Receive all the honor and the adoration in all our lives and all the testimonies. Even as we hug people today, Lord, you. Let the grace for health that is soaked in our physical body, even our clothes, as we hug people, let that grace fall upon them in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father God, we thank you for what you've done today, and we appreciate you, and we are so happy. Thank you for all the glory on the great. In Jesus' mighty and wonderful name, we pray. Everybody pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, sir. And thank you, everyone, for staying uh, in the meeting. Please, if they know that you're entertaining me, I'm having a feedback. All right. Thank you so much, everyone. Uh, we'll meet again on Wednesday for our Bible study. And also on Thursday, we have the 10 hours prayer marathon. Also, our, um, our business webinar has been moved to Thursday. And so the business webinar for this week, we are having it on Thursday and no longer on, on Saturday. And so we'll be having a life coach that um, would be looking at um, a few things that will help us grow in our businesses. So let's not miss that meeting on thursday the business webinar is um by 1 p.m east african time 5 p.m ghana 6 p.m nigeria 7 p.m south africa and 8 p.m east african time and uh, then on friday we have um, our intercessory prayer and so let's make it a date with entrepreneurs in christ to join all our meetings don't forget to share your 
testimonies with us and also uh, currently we are opening a whatsapp group that is for marketplace uh, for marketplace that if you want to advertise your business for other entrepreneurs in christ members to patronize you you know currently the whatsapp groups that we have is country or city specific like in nigeria we have the one for port harcourt we have the one for lagos and we have those in abuja but this marketplace e group um whatsapp group will have everybody together all in all the nine cities that we currently have our presence we are going to put everybody together in the same whatsapp group so that in that group you'll be able to uh, advertise your business and have people to patronize you but the disclaimer here is that would we'll not be held liable to uh, whatever transaction you do that doesn't go right so we are going to um, put up that disclaimer on the group so that whoever you are having your business with you should make sure to do some background check with that people to be sure that your money is secure with the person or your services whatever you are exchanging on that group because EIC is not going to be held liable for anything that goes wrong we are only trying to create a platform that brings uh, about um, networking and we believe that everyone here is um, is a child of God is a disciple of Jesus and those business with godly values irrespective of the fact that we get to speak with everyone before they come on the platform as members we cannot 100% vouch for them uh, we have the holy spirit in us but as humans we have other of our senses having to play in our bodies and so we cannot um, be responsible for everyone on this group even in job Uh, the bible says that when the children of god gathered when they went to church using the modern day english satan also went to the presence of god so i'm not saying we have any satan in our midst but i'm just saying that we need to be careful while we are doing these businesses even among the 12 there was a judas and so we need to make sure that none of us here is the judas and none of us here is satan so that we can do our business with god with principles and have interest and so that that also can help us to grow the community for others to join knowing that this community is solely for for the children of god those who truly say they are children of god so these are the um these are the announcements that we have don't miss uh business webinar on thursday don't miss the 10 hours prayer marathon and don't miss the bible study on wednesday Thank you so much everyone. God bless you and we love you. And um so in that note we are going to take the closing prayer. So Father Lord, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your grace. We thank you Lord, Lord for your word that has gone forth. For you sent your word. The Bible says that you heal them and you deliver them from all their destructions. Father, your word that has been released today it has gone ahead of us to heal us and to deliver us, Lord. For all the prayer requests that were posted on the chat, Lord, we release their healing in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, Lord God Almighty, the word says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with Holy Ghost and with power, and he went about doing good, healing all that we see. And Lord God, Jesus by himself had said that if we believe, we'll do greater works. And so we come in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the name that is above every other name. And we operate, Lord God, by the power of the Holy Spirit, which quickens our mortal bodies to the glory of the holy name of our Lord Jesus. And we speak healing, Lord, Father, for those in Kenya, those in Tanzania, in Ghana, Lord, in Nigeria, in the United States, in, in South Africa. Lord all over the globe Lord we bring everyone that is in this meeting Lord everyone that had dropped a prayer request Lord concerning one form of healing or the other your word says that healing is the bread of the children and therefore Lord they are fed with the healing of the of God this moment in the name of Jesus for those that are standing for themselves or standing for a family member Lord father your word says that you ask for the someone who would stand in the gap who will reveal the wall Lord that through this one who are standing in the gap for a family member for a friend you use them to rebuild the wall of 
their bodies, Lord, their sights, Lord, their minds, King of glory, in the name of Jesus. We speak healing, Lord, from the crown of their heads to the soles of their feet. They receive healing in the name of Jesus. Thank you, mighty Father. Thank you, King of glory, for we will return with, with testimonies to the glory of your holy name. We will return to give you all the glory because there is a manifestation of your power, of your glory, and of your healing miracles in our midst, Lord. Blessed be your holy name. For you, yours, Lord, belong the king. For you, yours, Lord, is the kingdom to which this healing belongs, Lord. And we know that you have released it unto us, Lord. Yours is the power, Lord, to make this healing happen. And Lord, when all is said and done, yours will be the glory forever and ever. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right. Thank you, everyone. Good night. Love you all. Good night, rest. For those uh, in the Eastern um, time, we say uh, good afternoon to you. Continue to enjoy your day. All right, everyone. Bye. 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 We hope you have been tremendously blessed by this message. You can help us spread the message of Marketplace Ministry by sending the link to this message and sharing it with just one friend or family member. As a tribe of Marketplace Ministers, our goal is to focus on building kingdom entrepreneurs with kingdom truths that can transform their lives and destinies. Finally, we don't collect offerings at Entrepreneurs in Christ. But if you would like to sow a seed into this project, you can do so via World Remit or PayPal, or you can request our account details in specific countries. Thank you again, and God bless your every move. Remember to like, subscribe, and share this video with a friend. God bless you.